Hey everybody, for we get started, I just want to remind you this episode is brought to you by our patrons like I Your Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, and Nestor Flores. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really help us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. I like how I did that in 13 seconds. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is time to talk about Legend of the Five Rings role-playing game by Fantasy Flight Games. Yes, that is in fact my boilerplate intro for everything. Anyway, so this video is not really new news. Um, this information's been out, you know, since like the start of the month, according to the assets I have downloaded. But I was just looking back over some old videos and I realized that, one, I hadn't done an official video for this, and two, L5R videos do okay compared to some of the other stuff on our channel, so I figured... Ah, why not? I can shoot that out really quick, and uh, I'm having trouble finding time in my week to shoot another longer uh, video f essay form thing, like uh, Enter the Dojo, and I want to do one, and actually, I think, uh, based on the upcoming, some of the based on the upcoming Shadowlands, and just in general, I want to hit Heated Defender next, but we'll uh, talk about that another time. That's an entirely different video. Today, we're talking about the news that, uh, despite the fact that even as of this recording, it's been several weeks since this was announced, but even as of this recording, Shadowlands is not out. But they have announced the next set of products, Courts of Stone and Winter's Embrace. Courts of Stone is a source book. Winter's Embrace is a adventure. And we're going to break those down in a little bit. But uh, yeah, there's not much else to say introductory-wise. Just that, hey, they announced these. They're announcing at a pretty even clip. I would expect at this pace that they're going to you know, announce the next one before these are even out. And uh, hopefully it's interesting. Anyway... Let's go ahead and take a look at what FFG says is going to be in Courts of Stone. So, presumably this isn't necessarily super new news to anybody, but hey, we'll cover it anyway. Maybe you didn't read the article. You know. Some people, they don't have time. So, here's a quick breakdown. The book is billed as the essential guide to castles and politics in Rokugan. It's right under there under Courts of Stone. You can see it in the little preview image. So this is a 144-page source book, which is a comprehensive guide to Rokugan's castles, keeps, and courts. It will come complete with a host of new schools, techniques, weapons, apparel, artifacts, and cultural information, and rules for integrating shinobi characters in your campaign. That last bit's kind of confused some people, but we'll talk about that in a second once we work through these bullet points. Uh, as per Shadowlands, um, and I think you can tell from the way this is set up and the way the Shadowlands news release article, and thus my video on it, is set up, this is going to be the format. This is very similar to their format for um, Star Wars source books. So this is probably how they're going forward with L5R ones. So the first section details castles and strongholds across Rokugan, including how to design your own and samples, and insight into the Crane Clan. So the primary focus is the castles. This will include new example castles, which weren't covered in uh, Emerald Empire. I know that some people were kind of curious about, oh, there's not a lot of dragon action going on. Well, the very example they give is... Um, Kitsuki Shiro, the uh, castle of the Kitsuki family. So, yeah, no, they're definitely doing it to spread out and kind of talk about the politics in those regions and uh, how to design your own, I guess. So, like, it's probably similar to the castle section in Emerald Empire, but maybe even more rules focused. And then also, the clan fo the major clan focus is on the crane, which is cool. The second section will include new player options such as schools and techniques, including shuji, rituals, and ninjutsu. There's that thing again. It will also include a n brand new minor clan, the Deer Clan, uh, presumably because one of the art assets is named Kyuden Shika. They are the Shika family. But anyway, um, their thing is that they have some, uh, their ancestors have some kind of divine gift to kind of like foretell the future, so they are keepers of the balance. Uh, they will both bring people up and take them down in order to prevent uh, dramatic disaster across Rokugan. Some people have been like, are they just stealing the dragon's thing? Are they just stealing the Otomo's thing? Are they just stealing the scorpion's thing? Maybe, but maybe not. Um, for instance, I I think the comparison here is, like, my first thought was, so they're the dragon if they did something. Um, another valid thought, I think, is, so they're the Otomo or the scorpion who are not assholes. Uh, is basically, I think, the way to look at it, because while they will also bring a clan l or family or person low, they also will help them up, which I... Have the Otomo ever helped anybody who wasn't an Imperial family ever? I don't know. So hopefully uh, FFG can actually get some detail in there that makes them interesting, and I think their heavenly mandate or whatever's going on will probably keep them more diverse than any singular one of the groups 
whose yard they're possibly stepping in. But we'll see. Um, there's a slight problem, I think, to announcing a new book before your first set of books in this style is out because nobody has any precedence. I don't know what, what for instance, the um, Falcon Miner Clan stuff, other than the outline of what the clan is like and some details on the school, we don't know what they're like yet because that book's not out. So we don't know how much detail there's going to be on the Deer Clan. Anyway, final bullet point. Section 3 will guide GMs in building a winter court scenario. Uh, apart from the famed You're All Emerald Magistrates, Winter Court is one of the signature types of scenes and types of campaigns even from L5R, so that's really good they're bringing that early, right after the Shadowlands. Uh, it will include new ways to spend XP and rules for codifying and exploring bonds between characters. So, uh, I'm expecting a similar to a, a game I'm a fan of called Knights Black Agents, where you can play uh, on a trust system, so you can invest different levels of trust in different characters, which affects how you can assist them and stuff. Um, but also, like, how likely they are to be burned or turned against you. So this will this will probably have some rules for some, like, maybe PvP-type intrigues or, like, how to, like, build a good system. In. And I assume spending EXP is, like, how to spend EXP to build bonds with NPCs so you can probably, like, say, oh, I spent some free time with this character without necessarily needing to roleplay every second you spend free time with this character. So, uh, all in all, I think this is a good choice, you know, courts and etiquette you know politics that's a very big question mark for a lot of people right now um the winter court scenario will be interesting that'll probably have lots of plot hooks and seeds for many different conflicts maybe get a little bit more focus on dueling i know that's a that's a fuzzy area to a lot of readers right now um i think the big question is whether or not this will have daidoji harriers in it or quote-unquote daidoji harriers uh to me if you're gonna print a book that says a, we're all about the Crane Clan, and B, we're also somehow all about ninjutsu, you... I would think that's a marketing misstep for people who are familiar with the scenario, not to include the Daidoji Harriers or an equivalent Daidoji school that has ninjutsu and stuff in it for, like, military sabotage and infiltration. At the same time, I perfectly understand people are like, but it's, you know, courts and politics. That doesn't really sound like a Daidoji thing. So, like, to me, it's a big question mark. We'll have to see. Um, and we'll have to see how how tied to the theme schools are in Shadowlands, because, you know, like I said, there are there are huge question marks to, like, what Dragon or Lion are going to get if they get a specific focused school in Shadowlands. So, Shadowlands is going to be really telling. Um, the other thing is, will this include Scorpion Bushi? Um, I think it will include some kind of Scorpion Bushi. I don't know if they'll be the, the classic Bayushi Bushi that people are expecting, but considering that they're covered in courtiers, like, they have their... Sneaky infiltrator courtiers who are also shinobi. They don't need another shinobi school. They've got, like, shinobi and courtier tags on almost everything. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll have to see. I would assume giving them a bushi as, like, a duelist or yojimbo school would be for the best. That would make the most sense at this point for expanding Scorpion. They, they You know, they have the manipulators. they got the infiltrators. Um, and they've got... What's the word I'm looking for? Um... Illusionists, Soshi Illusionists. I was thinking, what the fuck do they call the Soshi School? Anyway, so Courts of Stone sounds really interesting. I'm super hyped to see that book because politics and, and intrigue stuff can be really hard to get your group to buy in sometimes. I know that from uh, experience, you know, kind of kind of piloting uh, older editions of the game with my home group that never really took off. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that's like, eh, 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 eh. we'll see. Uh, so that's super exciting, and let's just, like I said, I... I really want to know what format there is. Like, there there seems to be an unusual marketing focus on ninjutsu in the book, so uh, we'll see. That's always a cool thing to grow out. Anyway, let's uh, also talk about the adventure they're releasing with it, because that seems to be their other development scheme. And so, this book will be accompanied by a adventure release, Winter's Embrace. Uh, this is an adventure set at Kyuden Doji during the Emperor's Winter Court. So not just any Winter Court, the big deal Winter Court. The Emperor's going to be there, and there's going to be some stuff going on. Uh, it'll involve complex politics between the Crane Clan and Mantis Minor Clan. You know, you'll be approached by a member of the Crane Clan to investigate what exactly the Mantis are doing here, because there's a lot of tension there. And it'll come with a, a double-sided map, which includes both Crane and Mantis Lands kind of outlines, and also a lovely map of uh, Kyuden Doji and the surrounding area, the esteemed palace of the Crane. Uh, and they didn't give an exact number on the NPC tokens, but they said 50+. plus. 
So, yeah, it's like Mask of the Oni. I assume it's about the same length. They didn't actually give a page count in the article, but I assume it's about the same length. Uh, once again, that book's not out, so I can't tell you what the format in general is like, but uh, I don't know. The map sounds really cool. You know, they're they're done by their usual artist, whose name escapes me at the moment, but uh, she's wonderful. Just uh, keep paying her money to make more maps, FFG. The tokens are probably cool if you're in person. Uh, for me, that would be like, I need a digital library because I run most of my stuff online, but uh, whatever. Uh, but yeah. It, uh, it sounds interesting. That's another good example of, like, you know, high-level stuff. Some people have kind of complained that it sounds like a lot of the adventures are kind of, like, high-flying, like, even though you're relatively low status, you know, they they get a little up in there. Uh, we'll see, I guess. I don't know. Like, the there's a lot of big-name characters in the setting, and so it does feel kind of weird to me that, like, you don't at least touch on them. Like, it's not possible for you to run into them. Uh, but unlike, say, something like Star Wars, the universe isn't necessarily so large that you could completely avoid characters or plot points that are, you know, core to the plot. So, uh, whatever. I don't mind that so much. I don't run a lot of pre-run adventures. I usually mine them for ideas. But if I do run them, I think something like, hey, you're at the Emperor's Winter Court and you're in part of something big. That's a lot easier to sell people on than you're fucking nobody and here's your fucking nobody job. You know what I mean? Like, especially for, like, cons and stuff. Uh, and kind of outro to both of these just to make the Winter's Embrace section a little bit longer and l linger you on this lovely slide I made. Um, this it's not really a huge deal, but as usual, apparently, there's the pre-order bonus. You can get some exclusive art slides and bookmarks. Uh, I know some people are like, don't pre-order from FFG. Uh, support your local gaming store. Uh, listen. Uh, when it comes to the card game... You should totally support your local gaming store because you can't run card tournaments out of your out of your kitchen. Uh, I have never ran an RPG or played an RPG at a game store. Uh, I don't know if I've ever bought an RPG book at a game store. I also don't like the inference that if you don't buy from your local game store, you're evil because I usually buy PDFs because I run online and they're like cheaper and it's way more economical because I can like copy-paste text out of them to send to people on the internet while we're running, you know, I can share them my personal PDF and be like, don't tell anybody you have this because it's got my fucking name stamped on it. But if I need to, that, you know, I can very quickly share it to people. So it's like, ah, whatever, you do you. You know, you 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 live your best life. That's all I'll say on the, on the moral stance there. And so basically here we are at the end. Uh, at the moment, as of the time I'm recording this, Shadowlands is out soon question mark they probably have one more preview they can do because they haven't previewed the gm section talking about oni and stuff at all which is a shame i think they kind of wasted a preview article talking about oh and there's crab clan stuff in here but anyway um they're running out of previews you know the pra there should be another one this week hopefully i think there was one last week for the crab but i don't remember my exact timeline listen i read a lot of ffg preview articles they kind of blur together i have a busy recording visual sc video schedule Depending on how I decide to do this, this video may or may not have come out of this the same day as a Legion video, which was already late. Anyway, uh, Shadowlands is soon. I think it's updated to shipping now. It's not on the... Or was it on the boat last? Let me double check some things. Yeah, okay, so I think the last update that is was, was it that it was on the boat, or is it shipping now? Okay, so it's shipping now. I had to double check some stuff. Uh, I believe that's two to th two to three weeks, and that was early, that was late last week that that happened. So it's like we've got all the physical copies in the country; they're in our warehouse. We're shipping them out to pre-orders and bookstores. So soon, um, and that means I'll have to wait another month for the PDF. Dear FFG, please stop doing that. You will not get my money until you release a PDF. Anyway, uh, Shadowlands should be soon. That I think will clear up a lot of formatting questions we have about Courts of Stone. And uh, will be super interesting because, like I said, I don't, f I have no flippin' idea what some of these schools are, and I'll be excited to cover them and enter the dojo someday. But first, I got to work through a lot more core book schools. I got to get a lot faster about that. But we juggle a lot of videos in the channel, okay? Anyway, uh, sorry for the bladed L5R news. I, I guess if I have any L5R babies out there, I forgot about you. You guys should raise a little bit more noise, you know. And uh, I'll try to do videos more often. 
Uh, once Shadowlands is actually out and I have a PDF, I will probably do a full review like I did for Emerald Empire, walk everybody through the chapters, kind of talk about some impressions of both the fluff and even the mechanics, because there'll be more mechanics to impress upon. I kind of move through how I feel about the book. And so I think that is this video. Thank you for time, everybody. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like. It's a great way to show that you're actually viewing and appreciating it besides just clicking on it. Uh, if you have any comments about what you think is in Courts of Stone or how you feel about it, leave those in the comment section down below. We've also got a Discord. At some point, I'm going to get together some people and run some L5R. And, uh, of course, if you're new here and not already, please subscribe to the channel because we will be doing regular L5R videos as they come out. And uh, don't forget to that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video because, obviously, like I said, our recording pattern is kind of chaotic sometimes. And of course, like it says at the front of the episode, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies. For instance, when we do eventually get around to releasing L5 our actual plays, uh, that for a, as little as a dollar a month, you can get those in an audio format downloadable in addition to we're posting them on YouTube for free. And so that is everything. Everybody, you know, remember to stay honorable. Since this is all about courts, I won't tell you about standing three feet from death. And just, you know, make sure you've got the perfect gift on hand. And, uh... Have a good winter court, everybody.